Hello, this is Dr. Rutledge, and I uh, recently received a question about utilizing the mini gastric bypass in a patient as a solution to the disastrous and deadly complication of a leak following sleeve gastrectomy. Um, I tried to ask a few questions <clears throat> about the patient. Uh, one is I, I asked if I could find out about the location and severity of the leak, and I got a rather cryptic reply. It's where all the leaks after sleeves come from, uh, up by the EG junction. Um, I also asked if there'd been any other studies of the patient done so far, and the answer was no. The leak is apparently done at another hospital, and this uh, friend of mine who is caring for the patient asked a particular question, which is, is the mini gastric bypass a good salvage type operation in the case of a persistent leak after a sleeve gastrectomy? So a couple of things. Um, I don't uh, have a tremendous experience uh, with uh, sleeve leaks, except for uh, the fact that many of my uh, surgical colleagues do contact me with this kind of question, so I'll give you a little bit of an answer. Um, certainly, we all know how deadly sleeve leaks are. I visited a surgeon who's a friend of mine in Paris to uh, demonstrate and observe and learn about uh, mini gastric bypass, and he said, by the way, um, I have eight sleeve leaks in various stages of complications um, on my ward right now. Would you like to see them? And I said, uh, no, thank you. I didn't want to see them. The idea of the mini gastric bypass and a sleeve leak is to uh, create a low pressure system. And the idea being that if you do explore the patient and do a gastrojejunostomy uh, low in the area of the antrum, then you'll have a low pressure system and potentially a little bit better chance to heal a chronic leak from a sleeve. And this is a patient who is several weeks or months after the initial sleeve failed, led to infection, and now is not particularly notable, not septic. Um, my a, a recommendation, of course, is to uh, not attach an MGB to a sleeve leak because oftentimes then they turn into a complication. And uh, around the world, we've seen many people present complications of MGB when what they were really doing is taking a complication from a sleeve adding an MGB and then blaming the MGB for the complication. So in general, the idea to create a low pressure system to help uh, a sleeve leak heal makes a lot of sense. Um, my own advice is that there are a lot of ways to attack the pylorus, which is the high pressure outlet of the uh, gastric sleeve uh, as a, a technique either uh, with endoscopy, dilation, uh, injection of uh, Botox or a uh, actual operative uh, pyloroplasty, which uh, because I'm an old surgeon, uh, <laughs> we're very familiar with doing that and it's an easy operation compared to doing a gastrojejunostomy. Um, the other thing, of course, is when you do a diverting uh, gastrojejunostomy, you have the issue of weight loss, which can be good, but oftentimes these patients are debilitated and malnourished, so the additional uh, diversion beyond the food stream away from the duodena may not be helpful. In this particular case, there's also the presence of a feeding jejunostomy at somewhere uh, reportedly 30 to 50 centimeters distal to the ligament ligamentotrites, and that would be a problem potentially having a feeding jejunostomy above a gastrojejunostomy, so again, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so, probably what I would recommend for consideration in this particular patient is uh, if they're stable with uh, a reportedly 100 cc's per day uh, drainage from a tube, a non-septic and stable patient, um, I would uh, attack the pylorus as the high pressure uh, valve that's uh, potentially impairing healing and uh, either dilate the pylorus for short term decrease in outlet pressure, potentially injection of Botox, or a uh, surgical laparoscopic pyloroplasty, which is uh, in most cases a trivial uh, 20 to 30 minutes surgical procedure and uh, not add a gastrojejunostomy to this case. Now, there is one other thing, and that is that the gastrojejunostomy um, uh, idea does bring up one other thought, that if you have a chronically uh, draining fistula, which doesn't heal 
and you've tried the other things, including stints and things like that, which sometimes given months and even up to a year to heal, um, the surgical attack that I would consider would be a defunctionalized root limb to bring up healthy tissue to the area of the EG junction. Um, but I would do my best to avoid doing a diverting uh, procedure in the face of a leak like this. And so MGB, uh, although is a, a superb operation, in the face of a disaster following a failed sleeve, um, I'm certainly aware of other people around the world, including friends in Egypt and around the world, who have used the MGB as a salvage technique from a leaking sleeve uh, with very bad outcomes. So I don't recommend it, in my opinion. Um, if I were going to do anything, I'd probably do something to attack the pylorus, and uh, there are some non-invasive kind of techniques to do that. Uh, if I had to do anything to decrease the back pressure, so to speak, and uh, decrease the outlet pressure, I'd probably do a, uh, a good old pyloroplasty. And um, I would tend to, uh, if I had to do anything healing beyond a stent or something like that, I'd probably do a defunctionalized root limb, which I think can be very valuable in getting a chronic fistula to heal. Anyways, I hope and uh, wish for the best for this patient and for my friend, and I hope that my advice would be of some value. And uh, I'll send this video off to you uh, quickly. Thank you.